Talk to many in the black community and they will be the first to tell you, some in no uncertain terms, how low down the pole of societal import is Al Sharpton. The man who claims he speaks for the black community more often speaks for a very few. And the mainstream media, most of all MSNBC, who keeps him on salary while he pounds the American pavement for donations to keep him well tailored, rarely call him on it. That might be changing. Welcome back to Midpoint. Veteran radio talker, commentator, and Newsmax contributor Larry Elder. Larry, good to see you again. Morning. Thank you for having me. Well, Byron Allen certainly went off on CNN's Reliable Sources where he talked about Al Sharpton. He said an awful lot of things, some of which we may or may not repeat. But I think the right. thing that he said that was the most salient, what America needs to understand is that Al Sharpton does not speak for me. He does not speak for black people. I think that needs to be hammered home. The problem is, to be quite frank, when I say it, people don't put a lot of salt in it. When Byron Allen says it, you say it and others, I think they start to listen. Well, how Al Sharpton became a public figure still amazes me. It, it stuns me. This is a man who became famous by falsely accusing a white man of raping Tawana Brawley. Still hasn't apologized for it. Uh, Crown Heights, uh, Freddie's Fashion Mart. Uh, he called Jews diamond merchants. I could go on and on and on. And somehow, some way, he's become President Obama's BFF. And uh, Byron Allen, Allen is right to call him out on it. My problem with the Byron Allen lawsuit, though, is you're uh, looking at a guy who says, I'm entitled to a certain percentage of the revenues from uh, advertising on black media, where's mine? And I think the problem with the civil rights movement is it went from demanding equal rights to equal results. Byron Allen is demanding equal results. That's as improper as Al Sharpton being bought off. Well, but what you're talking about here is Byron Allen, as the CEO of Entertainment Studios, basically points out that there is only one black-owned station between Comcast and Time Warner Cable. He wants more to be there. But it, isn't it fair to say that there could be, indeed, Larry, there could be some sort of prejudice here that is holding back black channels from making a buck and being able to get it out there. I don't doubt that Byron Allen is onto something in the idea that Comcast gives uh, money to Sharpton and therefore has cover regarding its lack of diversity. My question is, who's in charge of telling who and where and what diversity is? Uh, because I'm a black-owned media, I'm, I'm entitled to a certain percentage of, of media dollars? Wh where does it say that? Uh, if Byron Allen wants to make a case that you should advertise with me or pick up me, make the argument. Don't, don't pull out the race card the way Sharpton is doing. That's my problem with the Byron Allen lawsuit. Would you like to see more people like Byron Allen, more black community leaders get out there, whether they're media or not, and really come out in public and blast away at Sharpton and point out this fact that he does not represent all of the black community? I would like every person in this country to think for himself or herself, whether you're black or whether you're right, and, and ought not be whipped around and, and pushed around by the media, by academia, by Hollywood, by activists like Sharpton waving the racist card, when in fact racism is no longer a major problem in America today. That's my message. Work hard. You can get ahead in America. You really believe that racism isn't a major problem in America today? No. And back in 1997, there was a poll. Time magazine did a joint one with CNN. They asked black kids, do you believe that racism is a major problem? And not too surprisingly, the majority of them said yes. But then they were asked this. Do you believe that racism is a major problem or minor problem or no problem in your own daily lives? 89% said either minor or no problem in our own daily lives. So work a day, uh, getting up, going to school, uh, getting a job. Racism is not a major problem in America anymore. Thank goodness. But what about those in the black community who will say we can't get jobs because we are black and we are still held, people still hold that against us? Well, all I do is look at my dad. My dad was a janitor who did not know his father, worked two full-time jobs as a janitor, uh, busted his butt. My dad always told my brothers and me, hard work wins. You got a life what you put into it. No matter how hard you work, bad things are going to happen. Go to the nearest mirror, look at yourself, and find out whether or not there's something else you could have done to have improved the outcome. That's what my dad said, and my dad was a child of the Depression, grew up in Jim Crow, uh, 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 southern, southern America, and that's how, that's how optimistic he is about America. I side with my father. Work hard. This is America. You can't make it here you can't make it anywhere well there you go that's exactly <laughs> doesn't make a lot of the people that i know we learned the same thing all you had to do was get out there and work and sometimes Absolutely. you basically had to shovel it and when you did then eventually you got better somewhere down the line there Absolutely. you go it's, it's the same lesson no matter what larry elder always a pleasure to have you on the show my friend thanks we'll talk to you soon you got it all right take care the solid no holds barred and researched fact about what Iran is getting away with over nuclear capabilities. A secret parallel nuclear program that has been uncovered as Iran seeks to work with the United States and get a chance to build their arsenal. We'll talk to a person who knows the inside when Midpoint continues next.